everyone hope you're doing well welcome back to my channel thank you for stopping by if you're new to my channel please before you leave make sure you click on that subscription button share this video make sure you leave a comment as well if you're not new to my channel thank you for thank you thank you thank you for always sticking with me thank you for all the lovely comments i've also received some privately i am very grateful let's keep this channel going let's keep subscribing telling our friends and um liking and commenting in the section below so today i am going to be reviewing another book let's get started <music> going to be reviewing today it's a very um interesting book and i've read it i think i've read it more than once actually because i have um, derived a lot of um, motivation from this young man although he lived a very short life but his life that actually touched a lot of people and um, the book is titled steve jobs the man who thought different that is him Steve Jobs. When you talk about Apple, iPhones, iPods, MacBooks, that is the brain behind all these products we have today. So I, the book has 310 pages and is actually divided into three parts. Steve jo um, Jobs um, was born in February um, 24th, 1955 and he burst into life, public limelight um, in his early 20s. He was never an engineer. He was not a computer geek. He created lots of products with customer satisfaction in mind. He didn't have any engineering background. He wasn't. Um, he wasn't someone who had the uh, maybe very educated. He wasn't very educated as well. Um, so don't let your background define you. That's just one lesson I learned from that. Whatever your background is, don't let it define you. Don't let it put a limit on you. Um, he was adopted, actually. So he didn't live with his birth parents. So his mom had to give him up because she had him when she was quite young. And so he was adopted by Clara and Paul Jobs. Steve, Steve Jobs always referred to his dad as someone who spent a lot of time with him teaching him how to take things apart and bringing things together again. He also taught Steve how to do some mechanical jobs. So this for me is like kind of telling me to also, you know, take my children along, take the people around me along in my journey, whatever impact I can have in their lives, whatever life skill I have, try to pass it on to somebody, maybe somebody younger than myself so that that person can also pass it on, you know, on and on and on like that. He spoke well about his dad, the times of that. He was even saying his dad has a magical finger because he's able to make things work. So he could put things apart and then bring them together again. He thinks his dad is very good with his hands. At school, some teachers saw him as a troublemaker because he found school very dull and dreadful. He was always getting into trouble. He was always the one that was looked down on, never liked in the class. He made a lot of silly choices, which got, which got him into a lot of trouble until he met a teacher who changed his life. Because this teacher actually believed in him and gave attention to him. And that got me thinking that, oh, I've come across so many children, so many maybe youth or young adults um, that I mentor by God's grace. And I'm thinking to myself, you see some of them as maybe troublemaker. They are not the ideal ch student. They are not the ideal pupil. But what am I doing to help that child fulfill his or her potential? Do I just join the bandwagon of people that are also labeling that child as a troublemaker or am i willing to use my own um abilities or to use my own um skills to help this child out of that deep end of being labeled it's a bad place to be it's actually a really really bad place to be i was bullied when i was in secondary school and nobody saw that i was bullied they thought oh this girl she's just been lazy because i've got long legs a lot of people that know me know i'm a very tall lady and they just labeled me that oh you're just lazy but then i was suffering inside it was like a mental torture 
telling me that your, your legs are just there. You're not making good use of them. So let's look beyond what we can see. We see some children, some adults that we even work with, and we just label them from afar. We just think, oh, that child or that adult or that colleague of mine is a troublemaker. But when you look beyond that person, when you look into, if you can see into the mind of that person, you actually find out that that person has a lot of struggles beyond what you can see. So this actually got me thinking that I need to be careful how I treat people and not label them that, oh, that person is a troublemaker and just push that person to the side. No. So this teacher, which Jobs was forever grateful to, said she changed his life. And actually, he actually he referred to the lady as the saint, one of the saints in her life. Imagine. I'm sure when the lady was being kind to Steve Jobs, he didn't think it, she she didn't think Steve was going to be a prominent person, a well-known person. So the moral of the story: let's think about how we label people, how we treat people, and let's not put people to the side. Oh, that person is a troublemaker. That person is a dumb brain. That person can never make it. No, you don't know tomorrow. Nobody knows tomorrow. Let's be careful how we treat one another. Steve Jobs, also like-minded people, got together other boys at some point when he had these ideas bubbling in his head. He got these boys together who were also interested in what he was interested in. Steve was not afraid of breaking things. He literally pulled things apart and put them back together again. He wasn't afraid of starting all over again. He wasn't afraid of letting people off and employing new people. In fact, in the in this in the book I'm actually reviewing or talking about, he actually referred himself to as somebody that has no social, he doesn't know how to relate with people socially. He can tell you off in the public, he doesn't really care. You know, and some people will pull him apart. Oh, Steve, don't talk like that. You apologize openly, but is he gonna do it next time? Yes. So he has no social boundaries at all. He wasn't afraid of letting people off. He wasn't af His answers are right, yes or no. It's actually a great idea or a dumb idea. So if it's a great idea, he's going to employ you or he's going to ask you for more. And if it's a dumb idea, he doesn't care who you are. He lets you off. And he's also very passionate about people that share in his dreams and visions. And he was not afraid of, you know, talking to them, sharing his ideas with them. And letting them you know grow together he went through a lot of things in life in a bit to get a deeper meaning to himself to deep a deeper meaning to life he was seeking different kind of understanding he went into Zen Buddhism Eastern mystic mysticism into diets there was a time he was just having carrots and juice at the time he was a vegan even when his health was deteriorating he kept you know into his veganism he didn't eat the protein he was supposed to have so he was he was seeking deeper meaning into himself so he traveled far and wide just to get to some some of these you know some of these things just to get him to know more about things around him have a deeper understanding of who he is at 19 it was a school dropout he was seeking employment and to be honest, when I read one of the stories about him, I think it was on, it was just eating salads. And I mean, he didn't think because he's it, 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 eating salads, he didn't think he was supposed to maybe maintain oral and physical hygiene. He wasn't bathing. <laughs> and I think one of the companies he went to, he was actually stinking. He was, he wasn't, he, he, he had so many weird ideas. It's just interesting how his personality, you know, the, the book gave me an insight into his personality, you know. So Steve also got someone on board who was also Steve, but it was Wozniak. And um, they shared the same company together which you know brought forth apple and um the um the apple company was kind of birthed in his um dad's garage cleared the sister's room started putting all the motherboards and everything together just to bring forth this company 
which was a long, long road to success. Like I said, it had customer satisfaction in mind. So if he tries a design, it's not compact enough, it's not neat enough, it breaks it down, it starts all over again. If he has something that he sees, oh, it can be better, the screen can be better, or the motherboard can be this particular design, or the size can be this particular shape, or, you know, or this particular idea. He doesn't mind. He's going to break it and start all over again. It was Apple was his life. Apple was, was his, it was just, he, he, it, it was just everything about him. Even when he went on family holidays, he's not the best as at relating with his children as such. And he was just consuming, he was consumed about this idea of his products, which some of the things we see today, the MacBook, the iPad, the iPods, the iPhone, all of those things. One other thing that was mentioned in this book was the fact that he kept his private life and family life as private as possible. He didn't really disclose to people. And I think one of the um, things he did before he died, he, he employed somebody to come and write about his life because he said to him, I don't think my children actually know me, but at least they can read about me. So he had to get that person into his life to, you know, give him access to almost every area of his life just to let his children especially perhaps when he's dead so that they can have access into his life unfortunately he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer which led to his death on the 5th of october 2011. it was a very uh, sad time for the nation for the world because he was just a very smart person it's very smart man who knew what he wanted and was a go-getter he had a very very high expectation about you know life about things he always says don't waste time living someone else's life don't be jealous about someone else's attainment you can you can want it you can pray for it you can you know admire it but don't be jealous to the point of hatred stay on your lane what have you got what do you have in your hands polish what you've got in your hands make it shining that even people around you who want to come near you and say oh what you've got can i have a look can i you know can i see it can i share in your vision don't be jealous of other people and don't live someone else's life. Live your own life. Be grateful for your life. Live for your own life. Focus on your calling and see everything else as distraction. Focus on what you're doing. Focus, like I said earlier on, polish your, your, your gift. Polish your skills. Make it shiny. Make it attractive so that you can, you know, you, you have a better standing. So, yeah. That's me done. It's a very thoughtful book, to be honest. It's a kind of high and low. You know, there was a time, exciting times in his life. There was a time when he was poorly. It was a bit, you know, downside. There's so many things. As we all do, we have ups and downs in our lives. But at the end of the day, he kept his vision alive. What are your visions? Make sure you keep your vision alive. Yeah, that's me done. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment in the section below. Let me know what you're reading, the book you're reading. Let me know what you think about the book. Remember to keep going, keep moving, and don't stop. Till I see you next time. Bye.